everybody. Welcome back to the 16 Values of Enjoyable and Sustainable Prayer. Uh, I'm so glad you guys could make it and be a part of how to have enjoyable and sustainable prayer both individually when you're with the Lord in the secret place as well as corporately. How could you enjoy, enjoy it with others? How could uh, talking with God be fun, be something that delights your soul that you love to do and something that you could do more often, all the time, on a consistent basis. So um, today we're going to talk about value number 10. Before I do that, I just want to review from uh, value number 9. What we wanted to do is I wanted you to take the apostolic prayers and I wanted you to utilize worship, worshiping with the apostolic prayers, interceding with the apostolic prayers, repenting by using the apostolic prayers, using healing, praying for healing because the Bible says so, as well as serving the body of Christ because of um, through those uh, apostolic prayers. So I hope you kind of just took those and try to apply them. I know I was praying uh, today. I was praying for uh, for Hong Kong and different things uh, from Ephesians 3 verses uh, 16 through 19, which is one of the apostolic prayers. I pray them very often. It's one of what we think very uh, I think very highly of them. But today, we are talking about value number 10, okay? Value number 10 is biblical prayers using God's language, okay? So this is very, very similar to what we talked about in the previous session, but I'm just trying to go a little bit more into detail of what is biblical prayers um, and why, what does using God's language look like. So biblical prayers are just actual prayers and worship texts from the scriptures that we could use as manuals you know we could use these instead of you know picking and choosing from these random uh you know we love there are some things in maybe some of the prophets and like some minor prophets we don't understand the full dynamics of the context and stuff like that there always can be used though i i encourage you to use them just remember that there is an original intent on these uh, these prophetic words as well but um the cool thing about the the biblical prayers is that we can just we can take these models and pray them in our own life. Specifically, we can pray the New Testament prayers. They are extremely valuable, and they are the language of God's heart. Why are they the language of God's heart? Well, God put it. It was in God's heart first, these apostolic prayers, okay? They were desire, but then he gave it to the apostles. He gave it to these believers, and they cried out and asked God for something that he already knew about. And as they cried out, God answered and sent revival. These are apostolic, revivalistic prayers that you can pray. That were what, when people prayed them in the days of old, things happened. Buildings shook. Like there is tongues of fire that landed on people and they began to speak in other tongues. So these are have been uh, proved and tested as viable prayers to pray. And you could just copy them and God doesn't care about the copyright in that context. He actually wants you to use it. So... Um, there, I want to talk about five things, five reasons why um, biblical prayers are using the very language of God and how they're helpful. These, these, these biblical prayers are beneficial for our lives in order to have enjoyable and sustainable prayer. First one is they're all positive. Okay, that's good. You're not praying for, you know, smite, the, smite this guy on the, on the front row or all these crazy things. Like, we're not trying to say negative things to people. What we're doing is there is, what the first thing is, when you pray uh, positive things, it helps produce a, a non-judgmental atmosphere, okay? So I know sometimes like we'll pray for different areas or maybe different churches in the region or different things like that. And if you're praying these, you know, destroy, like, like we, we, we come against the sin or always coming against these, if it's all sin-oriented, what happens is... Um, it comes off as very judgmental, like that church is doing something wrong. Whereas these, the prayers of the New Testament church are always positive, and they always built the church up. So we always want to do that when we're praying for for the churches. Uh, they're designed also to help weak people pray. They're designed to help people like you and me. We are all weak, by the way. You're not some super saint. I'm not some super saint. They they're designed to help us pray. That's number one. They're a positive prayer focus. Number two, they're designed for the church, okay? So these New Testament prayers were designed for the church. They were designed, there's only one New Testament 
uh, prayer that was not it was only that was utilized for the lost and it was for the lost of Israel that's Romans 10 verse 1 but all the others like the ones like all the different apostolic prayers I told you from last week uh, all of them um, were uh, designed for us to receive revelation and design, divine insight on God's strategy through the church to change society. So as you pray, it's utilized to change society. Acts 4, verse 29, they said, Stretch out your hand, O Lord. And as a result, they received boldness from on high, preached the gospel. Lots of people, lots and lots of people got saved. Uh, the community grew, uh, momentous numbers, and it was, it was designed for the body of Christ. So if you ever like, how can I pray for the church? These are great ways. That's a great way to do it. Uh, that's so value number two is designed it's designed for the church value number three it awakens our heart to love the church and the incoming harvest okay so when you pray for the church I don't care if you've been wounded by the church in the past or I don't uh, whatever history you come from maybe you don't even come from a church background at all but the more you pray these church oriented prayers what happens is you, is you begin to fall in love with with the body of Christ in areas that you felt offended at God begins to tug your heart and lead you into forgiveness to love and serve the body of Christ and it gives you a heart for the incoming revival it makes you first excited that God is going to release a great revival on the earth he's giving he's making you excited for what's about to happen and two he's going to give you a heart to help bless these people that are going to be coming in these these babies in the faith that you're going to be able to fill and feed because you've been praying for them to come in and you've been feeding off of these prayers. So, um, four, they release unity, okay? So when you're in a prayer meeting and some random guy comes on the stage and says, God, I see windmills in the spirit and there's like wind blowing on these windmills and I believe it's the Lord saying that, yeah, that something, something, something. Now, there are different uh, denominations in the body of Christ. All the charismatics would be on board with that and start praying. But say the Baptists, say the Catholics, say the Eastern Orthodox, they have no grid for what that even means. They don't even, some people don't even believe in the gifts of, of, of the Holy Spirit. So um, it, you instantly get division in the church. Uh, the, and specifically your prayer meeting, that which you want unity in. But if that guy simply prayed, God, we ask, like in Acts 2, that mighty rushing wind of the Spirit, everyone would have been on board and everyone would have been united in prayer. You can always say that after, but if you unite them on the reality of biblical prayers, you get more unity and more uh, successful and unified prayer meetings because we can only go as far um, as we go together. Okay? We can only, we can, if you want to go far by yourself, you can, but if you want to go deep, you go, the, you go together as a body of Christ. And which leads me kind of to my last uh, point. Uh, value number four was unity. But value number five is it brings healing to our emotions. When we pray for the body of Christ, God heals our heart. God heals areas of our heart where, um, where the church has wounded us, where the church has come against us, and it allows us to really be open and vulnerable again to God and to our fellow brothers and sisters. So... Um, uh, I just encourage you to use these apostolic prayers. I... Uh, I've been using them for the last four years, and I do not regret it. It has been a blessing to use that, um, and uh, it's a great manual for early believers to to pray. And so um, I just encourage you to do that, and that's value number 10, biblical prayers using God's language. If you, if you want to have any questions, you can always ask me. You can always uh, uh, ask questions on, my, um, uh, on YouTube, on the comment section, or on my... Um, my website page. You can also check out Facebook, Instagram, uh, my website for and Twitter uh, for more details. So, look forward to seeing you for next time.